Hello people of the world, I come to you today with a message from the fire that was sailed across from Norway and is currently continuing its journey to the very center of Ireland by a horse. So the message, what I want to get across today is just uh, the origins of the fire and the intent of where the fire came from, what the message was that was coming through. So where I'll go, I'll just bring it back to the kind of synchronicities of events that happened that led me to the island and how I ended up on the island. So I was um, working on a culinary project of mine of creating a boat top traveling wagon, customized into a kitchen that I would go around the country on a horse and wagon being a pop-up glamping chef for different glamping sites around Ireland. So. I was then working on this, I gave a guy a ring and <coughs> the man who answered was Paddy Hanley, one of the best horsemen in the country. So as soon as I went down met Paddy I knew I was in for a journey that was a bit deeper than just going around Ireland on a gypsy wagon and a horse because he was the best man in the country driving four horse carriages and had the best horses and knew everything there is to know about doing a job like this. So I lived with Paddy and the day Samfire here was found by Paddy was the day that I got the call to go to Norway. So he found Sandfire, I got a phone call off a chef, a friend of mine that I worked for, said he really needed a chef to come over to an island to help him out, they were opening up a place. So I went to synchronicities of these two things. Sandfire arrives today, just on the day that I figure out I'm gonna need to go away to save for the horse, the cart, and the future of the project. So. I get the phone call to go to Norway and it was so natural for me to say to Paddy, Paddy, I'll be back in six months, I can pay you off for the horse as I'm over in Norway. So I get called over to this island, Tremeye, in Norway. Very, very, it wouldn't really happen. Like, you know, it's very small, rural island. There's like one restaurant on it. For me to get called over there, it's, it's, it was very unique for me to be brought there. So I'm, I agree with the chef that I'll come over and give him a hand. So I make my way then over to Norway to this beautiful little island called Trimia where the wildlife and the place is just absolutely beautiful. Ancient forests throughout the, throughout the island, massive forestry, just abundant and the birds, bees and the trees glowed like there was just a huge sense of vibrance off the island and I had a huge sense of knowing I was in the, the right place at the right time where I was. So. I'm working away and on my time off I'm doing a lot of meditating around these different spots around the island because uh, there's nothing else on the island, there's no like gathering spot or social thing like you can go swimming or kayaking but I was doing a lot of meditating around these stone circles that's where the, the, the fire came into play so I'm doing a lot of meditating around these stone circles and an energy, an ancient energy calls to me and says I must carry this ancient energy from here to the center of Ireland. He speaks that his work here has been done and he will need to return to the heart, the very center of Ireland. And this is what's coming true. So I'm doing a lot of work with different rocks, reading rocks and doing different meditations. So this is coming true that I had to do this with a fire. So I would have to carry one of the most ancient elements from one place to another to create an impulse of fertility through the land. Now, this wasn't just like that epiphany and I just went for it. It was a whole synchronicity of a huge amount of events that led me to this. So then I have this running through my mind, but it doesn't really settle. I can't figure out how to do it. I don't even think it's possible. So it's just floating in the back of my mind. But what really put it into play was when the boat arrived the captain of the boat, Richard, he arrived and it was just so meant to be. The symbology of him, the boat, the fire, the whole lot was such in sync balance that I could not uh, turn down the invitation for such a journey. So when the boat arrived and Richard arrived, he came into a harbour, I was sitting there on a, a day off just enjoying the scenery and the, the boat arrived and as the boat comes in there's a big dragon carved on the front of it and it's all black and tired and it's a Colin Archer. Colin Archer is the holy grail of boat building in Norway, one of the most highly renowned strong boats in Norway. So when this boat arrives I know by the symbology straight away I have to talk to this guy. 
just out of knowingness of knowing. So I go over and talk to him and uh, he needed a deckhand to go 50 miles south that day. So he was like, I'm gonna take off. If you can give us a hand when I'm by myself, it's hard, hard boat to manage when you're by yourself. So I said, yeah, grand, I'll, I'll come with you. And then he tells me the story of why he came into that harbor that day. So the reason why he came into that harbor that day, that he seen a huge fire at the end of the harbor and thought a boat was on fire or there was a car on fire or there was something going on with a huge fire. So he came into the harbor a three mile inlet and a three mile off with six miles off his coastline track to go into that harbor that day. So when he tells me that's the reason why he was in the harbor that day, I know straight away why he was in the harbor that day. So I'm like, holy, this is really getting into it. Like um, that thought or that pulse that was running through you that whole time, like this is really getting real. So now I'm like, okay, I tell him about the story of the fire and he brings me up to another stone circle that's at the back of his house and we light a big fire there that night and we have a bit of a hoolie that night and we um he comes to me the next day and he's like I have everything you need to complete that journey that vision that you you, you have in your head I have everything I have the boat I have the stove I have navy I have charts paper charts navigational equipment I can teach you how to use the maps I can, we can get the wood ready I just load of guys down at the harbor that will help us and I'm going um Whoa, whoa, that just happened. So then I'm in the I'm in the mix of the journey already. I knew I was already in the mix, so I agree to commencing the journey and the journey had to be done during uh, winter time for the combination of heightened elements. I was carrying one of the core founders of the creation of the earth, the fire. He had to meet the other four in their highest forms of nature. So their most energetic and most powerful states, the fire had to meet them going through that passage in their most heightened states of nature. So I then fix the boat with Richard, we pack it up, we get ready for the journey, the passage. So we light the fire back where I had originally been fully taken over by the vision of carrying a fire of fertility that would create an impulse from the center of the world out. So I have this, I go back there, I light a fire there, I put it onto a wooden boat and I start the journey on the 15th of November last year in 2019. So then I departed Richard and said bye to the lads at the harbour and we set sail. Sail around from the east coast to the west coast of Norway over to the top of Scotland. The boat was taking down in the top of Scotland for a, a very big reason. I wasn't uh, carrying the element in full respects of all the other elements. So I was carrying the fire with the use of an engine and sail. So I was eliminating the wind and the water elements that were at bay while I was sailing. If the wind went against me, I would turn on the engine. If the currents went against me, I would turn on the engine. So the elders of the elements, they said, Boof, you are not doing this correctly. So they smashed my boat up on the rocks in the highlands of Scotland in the heightened winter in January. I got smashed up onto the rocks and they said, if you're going to complete this journey, you must do it with truth and honor and respect to all four of the elements. You cannot cheat, you cannot have a deadline, you must allow yourself to let go fully and trust to what you're doing. So then I have this running through my mind and they were like, well, you have to have the strength and the honor to be able to rebuild that boat, refloat that boat. And if you can do that, we will help you to finish the journey, all four of us. So then I was like, okay, this is a test. If I can refloat the boat, I can complete the journey back to the center of Ireland. So I refloated the boat, took two months, a lot of stuff went on. And then I made it around to uh, Valencia Island, down southern Ireland in Kerry, where Paddy Hanley, I went up and trained, a friend of mine, Mary, she looked after the fire on the boat while I went up and trained with Paddy. Paddy came down with the horse, the cart, and the fire. You know, the horse and the cart and uh, the fire was in the boat and then I put the fire onto the horse and cart and started driving through Ireland and I'm currently in Tipperary 
Now, I won't go into all the stories. There's lots of stories and there's lots of different stuff online you can find. But what I'm trying to get across today is just the depth and the synchronicities that were at bay during this journey. For this to work out, there had to be higher powers helping me, people helping me. There was such reminders to people with the smell of the fire, the look of the wood, the oldness, the grandfather sense, because I do believe this is an ancient grandfather that was once in Ishnok and is now returning to the center of Ireland with nothing but positivity, only strength to create an impulse that is needed for the land now more than ever. So he is returning to the heart because the heart is where the source is to impulse. So right now, this fire will be going to Ishnok, the hill of Ishnok, and unfortunately there won't be, I would love to have a big gathering with lots of people there, but unfortunately it will have to be a very small private event. We will be streaming footage of it at a, at a later date, I don't think it will be live, but we will be streaming footage of it and we would like everyone to connect internally to the fire rather than being in one place just with everything that's going on it's just meant to be a very small very small group of people that will be there in respects to, to what is going on so it won't be a huge thing and I'll try to just keep it simple that we will be putting the fire out in Ishnok and information around that and regarding that will be produced on a future date but just for anyone who's uh, looking to come I know there's a lot of people who would really like to come if I can just ask you to connect internally find yourself find the fire and find the fire going into the ground the fire is not being put out the fire is being put into the ground in union with all four elements for it to go under the ground that is um, all I really have to say about the fire and thank you to everyone at Ishnok for the support and everyone around the country in Norway and Scotland, everyone for the support along the way of me being, you know, like a lot of people were thinking, what is this guy doing? But everyone with, with that I met along the way was willing to help and I've never experienced such generosity and hard work within a group of people to complete a mission and that's what keeps me motivated to know that I'm doing something that's meant to be done when you meet the right people at the right moment at the right space at the right time you know that is your motive that is your drive to keep going so I thank you all who have been present around this fire and who've been present around me during this journey it has not been an easy one and I thank you all and hope that you can all connect for the final days of the journey thank you very much that's all from today. From the camp, we are currently in Tip. Tipperary. Sunfire is off chasing the women, and I'm in a field full of meadow sweet. It's probably the last meadow sweet in the country. But yeah, that's all from today. Peace. <laughs>